What's good, everybody's channel, and we're here today with Caden, and we're about to do this interview. So, bro, uh, tell me a little about yourself. How was your week so far going? Oh, my week was dope. So far, we just came back from last night at an event. Jackie Copacabana, she's a DJ. And I was just asked to, like, perform. So it was really dope. So this was the first performance that We Outside was debuted, you know, post post debut. So now I get to, like, perform it. And it's actually, you guys could find it because I know it's been tortured. I know. I'm sorry. How was it performing again, actually being debut? How was the audience? It was, you know what? It was really interesting because it was, like, some people, I love performing for people that don't know me necessarily because I love that because it's, like, it's unbiased, so I have to earn it. Mm -hmm. So when it's like that, it's um, it's more it's integrity there, you know. So I'm like, yes, I know I got you. You don't have to know me, and that makes it even more better, because I know you're gonna probably like, yo, let me follow you, let me do this and stuff like that. How do I get involved? So that performance, somebody like I performed nine out of ten, and like there was a track that was like it didn't have any back vocals at all. Mm -hmm. So sometimes as an artist, you just gotta go with the pro punches. So I was doing the whole take with no back vocals and some dude just like, he was a DJ and he's like, yo, can I say something? Cause it was between the song, between after I performed it, I was about to go into We Outside. Yeah. And he was like, yo, can I, can I just say something real quick? And I was like, all right, go ahead say something. He took the mic, he was like, yo, y'all better, y'all better give respect to Caden. Like what's wrong with y'all? And I'm like on stage like, wait, like, and he's like, this dude just rapped his whole track in one take with no back vocals and he's not playing with y'all like do y'all hear that and i'm just sitting there like on stage like uh thanks like, it always happens like that like, it's not playing so it's like those moments like it makes me i won't say bigger than what i am because i accept that it just makes the moment a memory mm -hmm. that those moments so you know so it was to me i'm like did i do good and my friends were like are you dumb did you not see that dude just take the mic and be inspired like so it's not even cognizant sometimes sometimes i'm just like yeah let's just do this let's give a great show period you know so but it felt really good like somebody was putting up a lighter in the air and pointing you know they were really feeling it so yeah the people's reaction it, it went really well and what is the feeling that you feel inside when like that happens like even when they sing along because as you mentioned before you uh perform um out uh we outside in sonic muse which is also where we're going to speak about and i saw the crowd move and everything when you was going crazy how does it feel when like the crowd is like interacting with you if hmm, that's a good question it, it feels like a confirmation that what i intentfully wrote and how i write it's like when I go out into the crowd, I'm like, okay, experiment one. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Like, you know, it's like, and it's, I feel like a, I feel like a mad scientist, and like the listener, respectfully, mm -hmm. are you know my um, humanely test subjects. You know, like because we have to, we create and we have to test it on you guys to see how you will receive it. So it's like. Okay, we about to do this. How does this crowd like it? Nobody, a lot of people don't know me like this. You know, they're just coming off the strength of like whatever my branding is doing. So, you know, and that it always feels like a confirmation like, yes, like it makes me trust my pen more. It makes me trust myself more listening to uh, watching you guys react. So that's a that's a great thing because we need that feedback. You're from Staten Island, correct? Were you born and raised here? I was born and raised here. Nice. Born and raised right in Staten Island. Do you think um, living here in Staten Island, Monona for the Wu Tang, was that a big influence of music into your life? Or like, how did you get introduced to music? Staten Island's on my back. Like, that is my sound. That is my. That's, that's, that's my voice. You know, um, the stories I tell, my friends' stories, me and my stories, the experiences, the bars, everything from me learning how to rap from my friends who taught me how to rap like sith or you know my childhood friends nook like i would really text message them bars and they would slaughter me you know and i'm like now nah, i'm going hard freak that you know or to playing orchestra and the band and is 61 jazz band and symphonic band and making freestyles in our badass honors class like you know <laughs> just doing all those things have um bred me to be a Staten Island artist, but also um, 
the tenacity that I've learned in New York in general. Like, once you cross the ferry and you get out of... Because we're an island, so it can be like a bubble, right? So a lot of the things we can... It can just regurgitate and then we build on top of it, regurgitate and build on top of it. We're not really connected to um, the other boroughs like that just because of consequence of transportation, right? So if there was a train, people wouldn't feel so bad crossing. Every time I speak to my friends on the other side, they're like, Oh man, but the ferry though. You know, so like, like, you take a boat there. How yeah, you do, how you do that? You, you know, know, um, but that tenacity that I've learned from New York, that um, rebellious, just um, able to be practical, but yet creative and modernize it and innovative. That 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 shark and steel on steel, steel, steel sharp and steel. I learned that from New York. Mm-hmm. I had to learn that from all boroughs because it's nothing like seeing an artist from the Bronx and an artist from Brooklyn, an artist from Harlem, and seeing how they do it and getting inspired. And, you know, I used to go to the shows like after college, holes in my sneakers, dingy ass hoodie, um, splitting McChickens and jumping turnstiles, you know, trying to be a songwriter and being at like Black Bear Bar, like in Hole in the Walls in Williamsburg or in Brooklyn and just like seeing people I'm crossing elbows with now and they're making it and they're thriving and just like you know one day I was like that's gonna be me up there I'm a I'm a performer like that like how do they how do they conjure that energy and just watching and studying and I think a lot of Staten Island artists need to tap in and claim their proximity in New York claim your proximity is nothing wrong like go out there meet new people you're supposed to it's supposed to be like that it's supposed to be uncomfortable Mm -hmm. like i've had artists i've had shows showcases where you know they're like oh we got an artist from staten island oh staten island (laughs) what's Staten island doing here you know and i'd be the only one and people would laugh but then at the end of the performance i've had the loudest response so you have to create your proximity and don't be scared of it that's what it's supposed to do so that's what i would wish more staten island artists would do but yeah Heard you, heard you. And how old were you when you started doing music? As you mentioned, you used to send messages to your friends back and forth. Was that before hitting the studio or? That was before hitting the studio. Like, I've been, my very first, like, performance as a child was, like, Lauryn Hill, Killing Me Softly, the Fugees. That was one of them. Like, just being, like, probably about four or three. Unintentionally not knowing what I was doing, just enjoying, uh, just being a vessel and just enjoying and being a consumer of music, you know, as a child, just like, yeah, that's my thing. Like, or, you know, my earliest stages of dancing and, and painting are my childhood. So mm-hmm. when people be like, yo, this is dope, or you created this, this, that, I'm able to do all of these things because technically I didn't grow up, kind of, you know, mm-hmm. in that sense. So it's I've been doing it for a very, very long time. I've just, now I've just, like, accepted it that I'm doing it, but I will be doing it for a very long time now. So yeah, that's the only difference. When did that actually come into your mind that, oh, I'm taking it serious now, like this is for me? I would say high school. High school was like, high school was really like, okay, Okay, I think I think I have the audacity to do it. Because you, you know you want to do it. But you scared to you're scared to claim that you want to do it. Like you know you got the itch. You know, first it starts into a craving, an itch, then the itch gets so bad, like we could curse on here, right? Okay, the itch gets so bad, it's like, fuck it. Like, you know, I had to wake up one day, I woke up and I was just like, yo, fuck it. Fuck this shit, I'm going for it. And then one of my friends were like, um, yo, um, hit your uh me and my boy, Will, we be doing music. Hit him up. And I was like, Okay, so I'll hit him up. And in high school, and I was like, I'm trying to be a songwriter, you know. So I was trying to totally be under wraps. I was like, I do not want the stage. It is too much, too much energy, too much like prying, too much responsibility. I was like, I want to songwrite. And then from there, we just songwrited, and it just grew. And then I didn't know people were listening. That's my thing. I never know people be paying attention to me. I really just be in my own thing. And when sometimes things start off as a joke, like, then I started songwriting, and then my friend, we started uploading videos. They're so old. Up videos on YouTube. By consequence, by senior year in Curtis, they had, like, best dress, best this, best that, best singer. So my friends were like, hmm, 
Kyle-El. That's my name. Like, Kyle-El. Fill that out real quick. And I'm like, no. Absolutely not. I'm not going to win. I'm not going to win. They're like, do it. I'm like, okay, let's do it. All right. That's a joke. We're going to do it. We're going to see. Nobody's going to vote. By the end of the year, shorten it. Like, and the winner is Kyle L. Nicholson. I was like, y'all lying. There's no way. There's like no way. So those confirmations of just, you know, of purpose, it just, it just, at this point, it just got out of control. Like the joke just got, <laughs> the joke just got out of control at that point. It just kept rolling. It's like, okay, I think, all right, freak it. That's what y'all want. Cool. You know, but I knew it. I just didn't have the audacity to claim it. That was it. When you started sound writing, uh, what type of music were you writing, and what for what artists? Is? I was just, I was honestly, I just wrote whatever I like, like because I've grown up on so many influences of music. Like I said, if it was jazz band, symphonic band, if it was hip hop, R and B, I just country, classical. It it didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. uh, my motto is get in where you fit in, right? So don't really worry about the narrative of fitting in can you do it you know is it comfortable for you is this way you thrive that's basically the only question that should matter is this way you thrive is this where you feel comfortable at and even if you're uncomfortable you know how you be uncomfortable but you're like this is where I, this is it you know what i'm saying like yeah like of course this setup was uncomfortable at first but you knew that you needed this because you felt the most comfortable in this path so it's really about that it's like i just write you know, and, and the key is for it is music theory is like just each genre has its own etiquette, like its own principles. Like uh, hip hop has its own principles, its own rules, right? It's really gritty, ruthless, as in like all inhibitions are down. Mm -hmm. It's like you were, this is like rebel, no inhibitions, right? And R&B, it's like vulnerability, softness, you know, or then you go into country, simplicity. If you go into opera, it's technicality. It's very technical. So all of these different etiquettes and rules, you know, I've learned that from just growing up around it, being exposed to it, and, you know, really just being a consumer first. And that's the thing. Be a consumer first and then execute has been the best um, process for me, really. Mm -hmm. And I think that's about everything. Culture, food, um, religion, spirituality. It's like everything has an etiquette. Even even the block, <laughs> even the block work got etiquette. You feel me? Like it's rules and certain things that you don't do. You know, so that's just the rule of the land. And I started to notice around 2018. That's when you actually started dropping. Um, you got the video for Down Yard, uh, Yonder, uh, featuring Monk, Monk Monk. How did that come into play? What was the message behind that and the visuals? Because when I was watching, it didn't feel like a regular music video. It felt like you was trying to explain a, a, a picture, like a movie. Right. Um, so Down Yonder was definitely influenced by, like, that was, first off, that was my very first, uh, one of my first professionally done tracks that I was confident in. Like, it was, I finally found a studio that had my vision that allowed me to have my vision because a lot of the times artists will go to studios and mm -hmm. you know the engineer it's one thing and this is what i need like engineers and artists to understand as well like there are different like i said technique right etiquette with different genres so a lot of engineers will think they can engineer you know any artist until they you know but all they've engineered are hip-hop artists mm -hmm. so until they meet an artist like myself who's like R&B and then I'm like yo can we put some rock in here can we put some this in there even my engineer he was like yo we cannot be doing all that like I don't have and not not in a bad sense he's just like I don't have what you're looking for we can't do that so a lot of times even down yonder it you know shifted into things and morphed into things but um down yonder was really um a Staten Island story of the racism that goes on especially um, I had just watched 12 Years a Slave okay. and Eric Garner just passed away and that is where we grow up. PS16 is where our school is at. It's where everything like that's the threshold and it's also where 
we we were kids walking past meth heads and walking past drug addicts. Like I remember going to the pool and then going to KFC right after because that was a thing. And then being asked from like a pimp and a, a meth head, yo, do you have money? But that was our reality, yeah. you know, and nobody understands those dynamics and intersectionalities that, you know, um, black black people and people of color in Staten Island don't go through. That's the story they don't talk about. Um, that's the message they don't talk about. We get the Jersey Shores. We get the Snookies. We get the Vennies. And we get the South Shore story. But we don't get the complexity and the more colorful story of the tension, you know, so... Um, I hyperventilated, um, and I was like, that inspiration, I didn't even sleep that day from watching the movie 12 Years a Slave and then comparing contrast to where we were now is like, damn, not much has changed. So that's why down yonder, if you listen to the lyrics, it's pair, compare and contrast. So the first verse is like, down yonder where the leaf crunch under my feet, it was like a slave on the run. Then the second verse, down yonder where the roses rise from concrete. Now we're modern, right? Concrete is like now we're modern times. Youth die young from the crumbs we barely eat. It's like it really hasn't changed. It's just become more insidious. So the video was just depicting um, my friend Monk, who was Mark Adrian. He was the... The, the vessel for the music video so i was like yo bro i need you because he kind of looks like my nephew the little kid in the video yeah. so i was like i need you to play my nephew and he's like what and i'm like yeah just i need you to lay on the floor and die how would you feel about that he's like bro kill me kill me i was like great let's go um and shout out to my team lwa they've really like that's still sharp and steel. Like, you want to know why i'm like whatever this guy or whatever those guys um but we shot that video with um, director E, the director, and he really gave me the freedom to just express. And that was like the first video, actually one of the few videos that um, we shot that again. But that was the, the second video that I really got to learn a lot. And I was very involved and very impacted with that one. Was that the one with the extract? Extract? Extract would be the second. I mean, the first. Extract would be the first. Uh, the first successful video that I did. That one was fire. I enjoyed that one. That was oh, cool. So dope. Um, shout out to Jr. Man. Um, just once again, I'm very intentful with working with Staten Island artists um, who are very like minded and have that that it's a certain bite that I ask for that I see. Like, alone, first of all, like, there's a certain bite, right, with an artist or just a person that is very passionate in their purpose, right? So you see, like, you see them going for the quality. It's a certain quality that they, that that's just the standard. Yeah. So I'm very blessed to have a bunch of Staten Island artists, friends, peers, coworkers, whatever it is, to come across my path with that those sharpened teeth that I ask for and be able to execute things. And I love the fact that I can say it's all in-house. I love the fact that I can say like, yo, who made that? Staten Island people. So Staten Island people made that? Yes. Well, so what's up? Like, you know, like, so so what was said about what what happens? Forgotten Burrow and all that, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's the whole point, keep it in-house. Extract was very, again, Extract was very about self, but very about, it was about, um, extracting eurocentric thoughts and stereotypes from yourself so like if you're a person of color and just a black person living a, an experience you understand how your your culture can be breached by uh, a normal normalcies of like american standard we get it at work we get it from the food that we eat from the conversations that we are forced um to not have you know what i'm saying like it's the joke that that you that you uh that you giggled at and then you may go home like why the hell did i laugh at that that was totally disrespectful to my heritage like in some instances you know so that's what that song and video was about that's yeah. fine. That's fine.
how you say you love supporting Stan Island just in general. I know you were in a couple podcasts, such as with Dave Noodles, as well with Zula T podcast. Oh, and you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. How did that go? Like, how did you guys, how did you meet Dave Noodles and, and as well Zula T? Um, whoa. I'm trying to really figure that out too because I've done so many shows. So I think by consequence, I just, the way Euphoricon, my first project, just rolled out, I just had something to prove. Like, I was just like, I want a show. Mm-hmm. And I worked at Bootleg Mannings for the time, for, at that time. Shout outs to them. They're closed now. But um, I worked in Bootleg Mannings, and they always hear me sing. So they're like, are you always singing? Why don't you just throw a show here? I was like, word? For like how much? They're like, for free, fool. I was like, for what? So they're like, yes, do it. <laughs> so I I threw it, and um, with We Just Working, shout out to We Just Working. Um, I met Dave Noodles through them. Actually, we just working. It was like basically, I was I could I told LWA I was like, yo, I'm going to Staten Island to do shows. They like, what? What's in Staten Island? I said, boy, my my peoples. Like, you know, I was like, yeah, we gotta go back and you know just create proximity. I don't think I don't think my people know who I am. They know me, you know, they know me as a local, but they don't know me as an artist. So. I need to go back and, you know, show them what we've created and, you know, so that's what we worked up to. And from there, people understood like, okay, who's that guy? Like, who's that person? I didn't think people were going to come. It was, it was pretty packed. It was pretty good. Like people who wasn't even coming just came for a bite to eat, stayed, um, just to witness it. Um, I love that, but that was really like, the Rolling Stone, like everybody's like, yo, interviews and pictures, and that's when I was able to like, I was like, I can show you better than I can tell you. I don't feel like going and saying, hi, I'm an artist and I do this and I please, please, please. No, I'm the type of person like, I'm not gonna ask permission. I'm just going to carve my own lane and we just gonna do it, and then we're gonna see who you know fucks with it. Yeah, it's a, such a waste. Sometimes like such a waste of time fighting for proximity. It's like the best thing to do is just like. Go for yours. Just go for it. Like, it doesn't matter. Prove people wrong. But, yeah, that's how I really met them. Like, it was just doing shows, covering shows after that. Like, yo, can you do this? Yo, um, I want to meet up with you. Da, da, da. And that was it. And how was it, like, sharing your story in both platforms? Because in the first one, we got to get into here how you started your upbringing with music, with Dave Noodles. And then we got to see you as a person just talking about topics with Dula T. Um, did you feel like you were able to send the message of, like, let the people see the person who you are? Yeah, like, from, because those are two different, like, years mm-hmm. apart. So, um, I was nervous in Dave Noodles one. Because I think that was, like, my first interview. Mm-hmm. I was nervous. But, you know, with Duality, that was, like, post-pandemic. So a lot of things have changed then. Like, yeah. so it was more of a, on a on a spiritual note and a spiritual context. Okay. So that's the difference between those and the where we are, where I was in life. Like, two completely ones. Um, the first one was, like, you know, like I said, showing you better. I could tell you. Mm-hmm. I'm Kaden. Like... I'm out here, come work with your boy, da, da, da. like, just, like, trying to get recognition and, you know, um, as an artist would and should. Um, this one was just, like, oh, God damn. <laughs> Life is a mess. Like, damn. We we still here. Like, we still rocking, you know. So that one, that was, that was about, like, let me tell you the last two years, <laughs> you know. That's what that was, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I also saw that I also interviewed two other artists on this podcast, which was VR and Cozy Perry. Mm-hmm. And I saw we're gonna start getting into music now. And I saw that you made a song with VR for his tape for called Crickets. Mm-hmm. How was that? Crickets, man. First off, shout out to VR. That's my bro. That's family right there. Like we put in a lot of work, um, just building relationships. So 
I really respect him. That's one person who appreciates etiquette with culture and etiquette with just people, with humans. Like, he makes sure one thing about him, he makes sure he comes correct. And one thing about me, I make sure, like, I come correct and everybody comes correct. Um, So, it's just brotherhood locked in. Crickets, he's always, he always encourages to work. He always encourages to keep pushing no matter what. Um, And... We've we've been friends longer than, and finally we made cricket, so it just made sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, you ain't even gotta ask, bro. I want to do something. So made crickets, and crickets was really a smooth record. Um, and I enjoy the process of that. Like that's him. He's real smooth and slick with it. So it just was naturally. So when he played it, I was like, yeah, this is you. Let's go. Like <laughs> let's go. And how did you? Oh, you met VR when you were growing up, right? In school or? Nah, I met VR. Ooh. I met VR at a party. It was a birthday party. Uh, and it was this kid with these tattoos, swagger, swag. And me and my friend like, who is this? Who is this guy? Like, everybody here is like, yeah, they're regular. But this guy look mad. Like, he look mad like he got some on his brain. So, like, at the party, drinking, and, like, we're in deep combo, Like, deep combo with a bunch of friends. Like, you, you we're just, like tipsy and our voices are going hoarse just like talking about life you know that's just us being mad introvert just in a corner talking about uh, esoteric stuff and then he just burst out into freestyle I'm just like (laughs) I'm just like what and yeah he just like from there we just followed each other and and he was more natural than me like he's just like yo where you at what you doing like, I'm calling you. I'm doing this. You know, me, I'm just like, hold your horses, stranger danger, relax. That's just, that's, I'm just always like that. Even though I'm like, hey, everybody, hey. I'm just polite, but really low key. I'm just like, I need a corner right now. I, I just want to, I just want to be still. <laughs> so, yeah, but he's a really dope guy. And how did, Cozy, how did you meet Cozy Perry? Oh, man, I could tell you right now. Cozy Perry, we had a party. I was at a party with Girl on the Rocks, uh, and I was helping her with her event. And she played this song, and it was called Backbone. And it was like, doom, do, 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 And the way this voice and the, the lyrics, like, when you can't run to me, you can run to anybody. I was like, who's you? Your host. Girl on the rocks. She's like, yeah. I'm like, who's this? She's like, that's my girl, Kelsey Perry. And I grabbed my phone. I was like, what's her Instagram? So we're at the party. And I'm like, girl, I'm here. My name is Kaden, and I'm here at a party right now, and I'm bumping your music right now. And she's like, oh my god, thank you. I said, girl, Backbone is crazy. You wrote that? She's like, yeah. And then she works so quick. She's just like. Yo, you want to write on it? I said, don't play like that because I really, I, I will write some in five minutes. Like, so <laughs> the next day she sent me something. And then the, and then in a few moments, I sent some back. And the verse, I love that verse. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to do anything. Like, I'm not even going to, I really want to sing it, but I'm not going to do it. But I love that verse. We didn't do anything with it, but that really just like, real recognized real she was like oh you're not oh you one of those i was like i'm one of those like i'm not one i'm not here to play games like if we gonna do something we gonna do something from then on uh shout outs to her she's the first one um one of the first people that came to my event one of my many events of um at the bar where we just working i don't know if there was the i think it was my release party. i think it was my release party she came to my release party she's so business she's like so business oriented like y'all gotta experience her outside like she's very she's very competitive in a sense of she knows her purpose mm-hmm. and when you're around her if you notice, it makes you want to tighten up or it makes you get tight that, like, ew, who she thinks she is. But it's like she's so focused in her stuff and she does so many. She wears so many hats. And she's like she was sitting at the release party and she was just like this looking. She was like dissecting. That's one of those like I'm paying attention, you know, and um, from there. We just hit it off. Um, we don't really see each other like that, but whenever we do, it's always like 
I love people with focus and purpose. Mm-hmm. I love people with like that. I love people that you gotta catch up with. Like you know, like hey, sit your ass down. Let's have lunch. It's yeah. been it's been five months. You know, and I love that though because that's what you're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, so she's a hustler. Shout out to Kosi Perry, man. Talented as hell. One of my favorite songs when I first heard about you was 9 out of 10. I remember I texted you when I was in class. I'm like, bro, I just heard 9 out of 10. That's my favorite shit right now. I don't have that shit in my head. How did 9 out of 10 come into play? I was playing. I was seriously playing. Like, uh, Euphoria Con had came out, my first EP. Mm-hmm. And it's very, uh, it's very dark. So, at that point, you know, when artists are... The last people to experience the the project are the listener, right? So the artists already dissected and done created and molded and where we where we built it, right? So we're done with the experience. You know, the experience we've lived it. Now we have to translate it on on wax. We record it very intimate. Then we have to physically create the art for it for you to visualize it, right? So by the time it reaches your eyes, we're already done. We done. So Euphoricon was made, and I was like, oh, I can't be sad no more. We done went on tour. We did over a hundred and something shows. Um, me and um Starda, Starda and I, uh, shout out to Starda and we just work in. And we had toured this thing, and I'm like, y'all, I need a break. And um, my brother, we freestyle and uh, we were smoking, and then this beat comes on. I was like, oh, whoa, 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 back up, back up, back up, back up. <laughs> I said, what's that? <laughs> And uh, I was like, save that. So we saved this beat. And uh, I was uh, had a moment. I was about to go to work. I said, I want to I want to write something right before work. Um, and I wrote this this thing. And I, one thing about me, I was like, I want to if I'm going to contribute to hip hop. And I didn't rap for a while because um, I didn't. It's such a competitive sport. And sometimes it's overkill a little bit. Um, and sometimes it's a lot how media and, and just like in general, it can be a, a little inflammatory. Um, I feel like sometimes hip hop, by consequence of just how powerful, you know, black people are with their creativity in general, by consequence who exploit hip hop, I feel like it can show just one perception. And just one story when there's a multitude of stories throughout the day that black people live through, not just violence. It's stuff that leads up to the violence that's not getting talked about. The heartbreak, the victories, the losses, Mm -hmm. you know. So with 9 out of 10, I was like, I just want to make, I I don't want to rap until I have something to say. Mm -hmm. I don't want to rap until I have something truthful to say. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not that guy. <laughs> I'm not that. I'm not that guy. We're not that guy of like gats and hoes and drugs and stuff. Like I've been around it. I've lived around it. I have family who's you know into that. I have intimate relationships with that. So I don't want to perpetuate that to people, especially when I have a close relation to stuff like that. You know. So I want to articulate in a certain way. Nine out of ten just came out like that because it was truthful to me. So I wrote it. And um, it really came from my grandma, nine times out of ten. That's a black saying. Like, nine times out of ten, these fools don't know what's going on in the world. That's how we say it, you know. And it just rolled out into that. Nine times out of ten, they don't know what happened. Nine times out of ten, they was on that cap. Nine times out of ten. And the song was done. And I sent it to my friends. I was like, I think I did a thing. I think I did a thing. Just shut up and listen. So I sent it. And everybody was like, oh, we don't ever want to hear again that you're not a rapper. It's like, shut up. We don't ever want to hear it again. And I was like, y'all think y'all think they're going to receive this? Like, it's going to go well? They was like, drop it. I was like, okay. So I dropped it, and it just snowball effect came. It, it took a life of its own. I've been moments on stage where people refused for me to get off stage until I performed that damn track. It happened in real time. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's embarrassing, but it's love, though, you know? So, yeah, 9 out of 10. I know how you say you dropped your Farrakhan, your Farrakhan, right? Mm-hmm. My favorite song, honestly, and you let me know wh- if which one was your favorite song from there. But my favorite one was, uh, sorry, it was Hollows. I knew you were gonna Hollows. say that. <laughs> Hollows and Extract was my two favorite songs, bro. Hollows and what? Hollows and Extract. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I like when y'all tell me like what y'all like. I love that. Um, Hollows is my favorite track too. Hollows is my most vulnerable track. It is my most involved track that I've been with 
very intimately on um, just how I write and how I... um, It was... The Hollows was really made me realize that, okay, your pen is lethal. Mm -hmm. Your pen is... Is is a problem, and I made myself cry in the damn booth. Um, Hollows was just about, it's just about the hate we give to other people in the world, right? I was thinking of like a mass shooter. What was his last moments? What was his thought process mm-hmm. before he or she or they really went through with it? Like, who made you that angry? What was your story? What was the hate that you see or, you know, perpetuated or who taught you that, you know, because it, it comes from somewhere, you know, and we only look at the end yeah. of, of, of the result of hate. Nobody looks at the origin and nobody's responsible for that. So hollows were just basically, you know, I have these monsters in my head, you know, or these insecurities or just these you know, just mm-hmm. sh- shit that we try to get over in our head and we constantly, f- you know, the shit that stops us from being us. Like, you know, I call those hollows, you know, the, and the people who go numb to those thoughts, right? The people who believe those thoughts, you know, they go bitter, they go numb or, you know, that's the judge in the room. That's like over, you know, penalizing freaking black and brown kids. That's the cop. That's the, that's your mom. You know, that's anybody who's just very dark and who just believe that dark. And that's hollows. It's just like, be careful of your thoughts and be careful of the evil and the wicked you give because you create the monsters that you see I agree on that. as a society. You do. Yeah. Another single that you dropped as well was Better, which was more of a breakup song, right? Yeah. Yeah. How was that? What was the message behind that? Or what were you going through during that time? I was really inspired by... um seeing my brother in a relationship that I didn't like and I just seen it was unhealthy I was just inspired by it oh well (laughs) like um yeah that was it like I was just like "Mm, you don't know how to articulate what you need to say so I'm gonna say it in a song so here it goes and that was just really for every good guy that has their heart broke every good guy that I see that's trying that that's really trying and really know their purpose and trying to incorporate somebody else with it mm-hmm. and or and it can be a woman too you know um but this one was for the boys we had so many you know songs that don't talk about pain enough they talk about pain but men's pain certain in certain aspects you know we need to reflect on stuff yeah. <laughs> And what from all the music that you chip, futures with, who was your favorite? Because you also, besides Cozy Peri VR, you also worked with uh, Brunchless, I Am y- YF, uh, so Hiti, Hiti, H E I T T, H E I T T. That was uh, I faded, I faded like a, f- uh, I faded like a flavor. Oh, oh, the height, the height. Yeah, yeah Heidi, the height. Yeah. yeah. Um, my favorite. I don't think I. Hmm. I don't think I'm necessarily have favorites. Mm-hmm. I would say the one that pushes me is whenever I work with my my brothers, uh, YF and Mark Adrian. I'd say they push me the most. Those are the ones who like really get in my head because they know me. They'll look at me and be like, "Kaden, get your ass up and st- drop the pin." Put the phone down. So I know you're writing over there. Get in the booth. And, like, you know, I'm like, I can't. I, I need to write. I can't. And they, like, you know, like, <laughs> I'm such a dork. Like, you know, so they're like, no. Come over here, bro. Like, you know, and they, they push me to. They know my purpose before they. They know what I'm trying to do. They'll call me out on my purpose. I'm thinking I'm low-key. And they're like, we see what you're trying to do. Just come over here and try it. Like, just just jump in. So, yeah, those the, those are the best moments. Fire. And how did you come um, come with Sonic Muse the concert? Because that's where I got uh, to see you perform for the first time as well. Sonic Muse was basically something that I just wanted to give back to the community after a pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I felt that where I was at the time, um, my voice wasn't vocal uh, wasn't as strong because I had caught COVID, mm-hmm. and I had, and by consequence it led me to lose my voice for eight months. Yeah, I didn't know what would happen. So the reason why you guys got we outside so late was because of that. I was like, I don't know 
if I trust my voice right now because you know um, for a singer and I think rappers need to understand this too um, your voice is an instrument so um, and it's muscles and a lot of things are muscle memory so when I lost my voice for like about six to eight months um, there was certain muscles that I wasn't familiar with because they were out. It's like being out of the gym, right? So basically I had to start back up a lot. So I was with Kosi, you know, writing music in the basement, just like going hard. You know, we were just like, yo, let's go to work. Uh, We were putting in a lot of work and I had to start from a hum and drinking my teas and we doing prayer, we crying and we crying, we praying, we doing a lot, like just a lot of bonding and um yeah, uh we just working called and we've done previous events and we've done a lot of things together, a lot of projects together that went successful. So at this point this is a, like a trusting partnership that we've like built a relationship. So I'm blessed for that. They, you know, started calling me. He was like, yo, it's go time, we in season, so we need you to do this, create something create come up with something pull it off for like a bunch of months um i'm just only wrapping it up like putting it short but and i was like say no more say less um i was like how long i got he's like you got about three days i was like three days to make some i said bet say no more so from then i wrote a whole list detailed how it's gonna go and i was like y'all when we do this it's gonna be a snowball effect Mm -hmm. it's gonna it's gonna roll people gonna come and we may have to expand and uh yeah a uh, girl on the rocks i was like you want to host it with me i like i would love for you to help me do this so she came on and she fine-tuned it and we're looking it over and we're you know trial and error first event amazing it was really for the community i really wanted to do something being an artist and understanding proximity mm-hmm. asking for proximity asking somebody to believe your proximity that you can pull it off and having to go through hurdles just to it's like a mess so it's like it really fucks with the artist's worth you know it really fucks with your worth and it's like yo i don't even want to do this no more like i'm not getting the respect i want this was about you don't have to fight for respect we're not doing that come one come all sonic muse is really like we're celebrating art period not just a singer not just a rapper we're celebrating if you can cultivate something from mind to matter that's what i'm celebrating that was it so bring your gift that god gave you and let's fucking go like let's just make an event so that's where it started from really that's fire and what made you like choose that name sonic muse oh man sonic muse i love sound and you know muse like you know what inspires you whatever inspires you you know life is a muse you know um I know a lot of times, like, people complain about life. Like, we have had this discussion last night. An artist was like, yo, I'm sorry for, you know, life be, be, be kicking my ass. And I'm going through this. I'm going through that. And, you know, I'm like, I said, I was like, don't apologize for life. Life in. Life be life and Don't apologize for it. I was like, life imitates art and art imitates life. Right. So I was like, you, they work hand in hand. I was like, if you didn't have life, you wouldn't have art. You wouldn't have nothing to sing about. I was like, those songs that you're putting on, you know, you're saying the songs that went viral. It's like whatever songs that you're, you're doing or whatever, it's obviously working. Mm-hmm. That's your life. And don't ever forsake it because it's helping people because you're translating in your music and whatever you're feeling and translating is helping so many people and it's it's they're resonating with that so yeah life is hard they be life in but it's your inspiration you know you can always make it better though but yeah how did you get how did you get your name kaden um kaden is just an alchemation of my whole name um which is at first I hated it. I didn't want Kaden. Um, somebody already had my name, my first name. I'm not gonna tell y'all. Y'all gotta earn it. So no. Um, <laughs> but uh, you'll hear it around. Um, you'll hear certain names that I have of an alias, which is so interesting because as a little kid I was like, I don't have a nickname. I got a nickname, you know. And uh, I've just acquired all these names from different chapters of my life now so if you peep and listen to you you can tell who's a part of my life like who knows certain names but Caden was just a name change and I was like I need a name but it has to be good 
And I was just like, man, just take all my names, like my middle, first, middle, last, and just put them together. And I was like, I'm not really lying, giving you me. Like, it's still me. Um, So I'm really telling the truth. And it's like, it's difficult to spell. I'm like, you know what? In my head, it was just like, you know what? They got FKA Twigs out here. They got uh, Cookie Kawhi. They got, I was like, these motherfuckers going to earn how to say your name. So if you good enough. They're going to want to learn how to say it. I was like, word, if I'm good enough, they're going to want to learn my name. So that's right. You know, and that's how it became a thing. So I told my, you know, my team, my LWA team, I put in the chat. And they're like, I'm telling you right now, we're not saying no Caden. <laughs> we calling you. We calling you what we always call you. And but then again, it just started to. I seen. That the more that I worked hard for it and the more that I progressed in this career, this this pursuit, mm-hmm. more people start calling me Caden. The more I see people call me Caden, it's like, you know, because I had to change it in a, like a mist of my artistry. So the more I see it, I'm like, yeah, I say that shit, you know, <laughs> learn that shit. Yeah. So it feels great. It feels great. That's fire. And how you said, like, you had different personas in your music. Do you feel like you switch it? Because I could see your sound switch from 9, nine out of 10, mm-hmm. from better to um, we outside. Like, I would see, like, Chris Brown vibes, Kendrick Lamar vibes, <laughs> and just some crazy rap shit. You know what it is? Like I said, um, everything has an etiquette, right? So I'm big on music theory. I love music theory. Music has a history. If you want to find where society is and how their thought process is at the time Mm -hmm. look into the music that they listen to right so you can look back at like you know mlk and civil rights and you can listen to what they're listening to at the time the supremes the you know motown the whole motown era um the spinners all of these the honeycombs um all of these artists at the time sing about love justice poverty but in a positive way of like connection right they were speaking about a message um just to connect of like civil rights like this is what's going on this is what's happening and i know that other people are going through it so really i use those principles just to like okay rap right it's like okay you're not gonna say nothing until it sounds right and it sounds good and it can compete and not compete with people like artists, but could compete in a market, you know, respectfully can compete on radio. That's what I go for. I really don't compete with artists. I compete with the market. Um, I don't give a fuck about artists respectfully in that sense. Um, when it becomes like, oh, who's the better artist? Who's better? I don't give a fuck about none of that. I'm competing with the market. What's on the radio? Um, so in that sense, it's really just about what I grew up listening to. And who I resonate with. So as for rap, like Missy Elliott, Kendra, I, somebody came up to me. Who said it? Somebody was said. Somebody gave me a nickname, and they named all my influences in that nickname because it was abbreviation. It was like Missy Kendrick, Timbo, something. I was like, wow, you really heard that in my music? Wow, you really heard that? Wow, um, Method Man, like Mag- Magoo, like. Uh, one of the best cadences from like early 2000s and 90s like just artists who stand out to me um who i grew up on who i respect who i love you know um those are uh, those are just like they just stick out they just come out prominent you know so i really just my style just switch up um they're still me but there's a like i said there's an etiquette to r&b that i have to switch over and and go in that toolbox, my toolbox, and utilize. Then if we're going to do classical, there's certain classical, you know, or house music, there's certain tools and rules. It's like playing Uno. Mm-hmm. You can't take Uno and go to Monopoly, no, yeah. you know? But if you're smart, you can make a whole new game mm-hmm. with the same two rules. You feel me? So that's what I do. I just take different elements, like cooking, right? Like, I may want Mexican food. But I know I could find a balance that where Thai food could work in there too. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all both use limes with, 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 with food. Or, you know, it's just like that. You know, Asian or Caribbean, I mean, African and Caribbean food. There are elements everywhere. Everybody has to sofrito. Yeah. 
Yeah. Everybody got a damn sofrito. We just name it different shit. Plantains, platanos. It's just, everything is connected, and that's the that's the strand of that's the the cheat code. Mm-hmm. Everybody connected. You just gotta learn where it is, and you and sometimes it's so much easier with like music theory. So much easier when you know how to cook. It's so much easier when you 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 just I don't know when you've been to jail in a corporate office. It's so much easier to be a boss. <laughs> you have those two compare and contrast like com, you know contrast. So you just take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, navigate. Mm-hmm. Where do you um? What do you want your message to be taken when they when your supporters do listen to your music? Hmm. One that I'm not in a play with. <laughs> One that I'm not in a play with. Uh, but two, I want them to take away that a message. I don't care what the message is, but I want them to take away human connection. Honesty. That's what I want you to, to walk away from. That everybody has feelings. And that sounds so cliche. But I feel that it's because we don't. We're in this whole culture like demon time or fuck feelings. Da, da, da. My favorite saying is it's like it's not that I don't feel. It's like I feel everything. I think that's the problem with people. All this like numb stuff and you know social media can like inflame and exaggerate so much shit. And it's just like it can kind of become an echo chamber redundant. And it kind of like people are just like woe is me and my pain and my pain and my pain. And like we're just trauma bonding. I want people to yes connect to the trauma but take away redemption. Learn redemption. Like learn grace. Learn forgiveness. There's a compare and contrast. It's like we're losing balance. And it's always like either trauma, fear-based, violence, hyper. It, everything's hyper-sexualized or everything's hyper. It's like it got to be one. It got to be It got to be black. It can't be white. But what about gray? You know? It's like, yeah, you can feel mad, but you also can feel sad. You also feel like vengeful, but happy as well. It's like it's so many flavors to mix. That's what I'm saying. Like it's flavors. I like mixing flavors. That's it. What is your favorite sound to make? Mm, I don't have one. I think uh, it has yet to be created. Mm-hmm. I, that 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 right there. It's like my the sound that my favorite sound that I like has yet to be created. So I can't answer that question. And I think that's the drive that makes me keep creating. To understand that and get close to that sound. And try to uh, try to continue to tap into that sound. I think, um, I think I'm uh, on that way of like doing that. Of learning that. So that's, that's the most exciting part. When I DM'd you when I saw We Outside coming out. I, I call it myself. Is it going to be a summer anthem? Honestly. Um, what do you think uh, We Outside is going to bring the ch- uh, type of attraction to you? See, I don't want to I don't, don't want to talk mm, I don't want to put my eggs in one basket now but, okay, I'm going to be honest okay, I'm going to be very honest uh because I don't want to bubble this and then go back years later and be like, that shit ain't good. God damn thing. You a damn liar. You know, <laughs> um, I want this track to first what I want this track to. I just want people to be inspired by this track. I just want people to feel energy and get energized. I want it to be a serotonin boost boost. Like this is just serotonin boost like it was for mine. I wrote this out of post depression. After pandemic, they said, oh, now, um, this just end. Artists, um, the city of New York can open back up, you know, and that meant so much to me as an artist because that meant we got, the service workers and the artists got hit first. Mm -hmm. That hit our pockets the most because that was human connection is how we cultivate. We literally bring people to a room to spread our message. We're social creatures, one, and artists are empathic too so you cut us off from feeling thought since from anything um 
so we outside was complete a, a rejoice of just humanity that's what we outside is it's a rejoice of humanity like we're outside it don't get no obvious than that we outside so this track it just got bigger than me at this point mm-hmm. it got bigger than me uh at this point it's like i'm at a threshold where i don't have to fight for proximity mm-hmm. an artist trying to convince people that you are an artist now wherever i go i'm seen as that artist you know and i love that um i feel like we outside is expanding and it's taking me places that i can't even imagine i can't call it usually i'm able to call it usually i'm able to like this is god what's gonna go this is a trajectory this is where this is where we're gonna end up and i'm i'm right most of the time I'm thank God, but this one just feels so much more bigger than me mm-hmm. to where I just had to sit back and be like, yo, I think I did something. And I think I did something that's a little bit bigger than me. Mm-hmm. And I think it may just change my life. That's where I'm at. So I can't even really answer that because I'm still in it. Like I'm still spending moments where I just had to sit down and be like, y'all, like I'm very emotional. Because this track is just like I feel something is just like With this track And it's just gotten me attention That I didn't even ask for Mm -hmm. Something that was for the community Which is Sonic Muse Has really garnered something It's put me in the center of something You know People still come up and ask me about Yo when are we getting Sonic Muse I'm like why y'all concerned Like y'all don't What Like it it Mm -hmm. boggles my mind That people are still concerned about a party you know, but it's not just a party for them, I guess. Like, you know, it's, it's an experience. So I'm really thankful for that. So that blows my mind that that song is connected to it. Even the the cover art is my mask. That yeah. So that energy, I'm very spiritual. So that energy is y'all. That energy is like, so you're, you said, like, do you feel like this show hit? I'm I'm about to say, well, do y'all feel like it's y'all hit? It's y'all song, so it's like y'all keep playing it. Y'all let me know, like as long as y'all keep playing it, that tells me that that's y'all hit. You know, um, it's y'all's now. It's not even my it's not even my song. It, I wrote it, but once it's out there, it's for the people. So y'all decide that. You know, really, honestly, yeah, truly, y'all decide that. Yeah. yeah. And I noticed that um, you literally whatever you say, you're always gonna end up doing it. Like Sonic Muse, your music, songwriting, this and that. Where do you see yourself in a year or two from now? Hmm. <laughs> Where do I see myself in two years from now? Working with your favorite's favorite artists. Okay. Period. Bye. Being in those rooms and creating, writing. I don't even care to be signed. It's not even about that. Mm-hmm. It's working. It's just putting in, being recognized on the caliber that I give and having that leverage. For me, it's about leverage being an independent artist and being an artist in general. Mm-hmm. Um, having that leverage and that etiquette. Like, I want to be that artist that make people, that make niggas sit up. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you, where you're from or who you, like, I want when people see me and, and, I, and, and I'm very tenacious with this because it's not just me who's who's getting my vision across it's my boys it's my brothers it's my sisters it's my niece and my nephew it's my best friends you know these are it's my island it's these are the people that i put on my back these are the people that work with me these are the people i hire and employ these are the people we make money together so whenever i come into a room and like yeah you see me but when you see me you see we yeah and when you see quality straighten up like talk to me nice that that paper better come correct that that my time i want my time to be respected because the time that we put into this the funds we've (laughs) we've eaten almonds for these visions we've starved for these shits you know what i'm saying so no matter where i go you will put respect on it and i don't have to ask for it you can see that it comes across in the quality that i give Mm -hmm. and when you ask me where does the quality come from and then i can say me you like, well, damn, well, who paid for it? And then I can say me. And then you say, well, damn, how much do it cost? And I can say, well, well, this all came from me. So this is what the number looking like. That's what I want, you know, and that's, you know, and I want people to be like, well, damn. Where can you be at, like, in California, like, tomorrow? 
Yeah. That's all I want. I just want to be seen as and respected as a creator, not just an artist, but just as a business person, as a businessman and a creative and a mark and a, and a marketing strategist. Like that's what I want to be seen as. So it's bigger than just like music for me. It's I don't plan in two years. I plan on doing anime theme songs and voiceovers on on Adult Swim. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Dawn Richard, one of my favorite artists, who's also independent, or she's independently signed as well. But she's been putting in the groundwork, and she's like a singer songwriter she creates and collaborates with stylists she's a she's damn near a model she's uh she works in animation and she does scoring for animations i'm seeing the expansions of artists she's a damn chef like she owns her own restaurant like that artists can be anything they want and then when when you just sit in that and and and, and invest in it and grow it you can really make a lifestyle out of it. It's hard. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's so hard. But it's so worth it when you do it because nobody can take it away from you. And that's the feeling that I want to walk in with, off with and every artist to feel. Nobody gets, They take so much away from us in this, us in this world, right? And the one thing, thing that they can't take away from you is your voice, is your message. And when you can get a blessing to be lucrative off of it, And it's a blessing to touch people and people believe it. It's a big deal. You know, it's a responsibility to that. So I don't take that, like, at all. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Thank you for coming on my show, bro. I really appreciate it. We've been waiting to do this for almost a year now. Nah, for real, a year? Yeah, Yeah, dang. Has it been a year? Last summer is when we first met. You know what? It was, I, I wasn't tripping over it either because I knew because what I was working on personally I was like he's gonna get to experience what I'm working on he's gonna pull up the sonic views he's gonna I was like I'm not I don't want him I don't want this interview to be quick mm-hmm. I don't want this interview to be now that's what I was saying I don't want this interview to be now because I was like wait until he here we outside that's what in my head I was like wait till he hears I was like then I didn't want to interview with you until the song was out now the song is out for y'all to hear finally because it was torture it was torture for me like, for y'all too I know and do you have any other projects coming up anytime soon? Like any videos coming for We Outside or anything like that? Everybody keeps asking for this video. So since y'all asking for this video, I am personally... Listen, let me take these glasses off. Since everybody keeps asking me for this damn We Outside video, which is going to be made, period. Period. But since y'all keep asking, y'all asses better pull the hell up. Because I, don't, I better have some bodies. Oh, yeah. You. Okay. Oh, okay, cause, cause make sure, cause I don't want to ask, and y'all don't come out, okay? Cause it's gonna be. Uh, listen, if that's the case, dang, I may have to. I, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to. We know I come deep with like three other cameramans and three other cameras ready y'all, to record. We'll do behind the scene and all that shit. Like, like, what's the video gonna be like? What is it gonna do? So, what are you like? Keep faking these interview like last night. Somebody was like, "So, what are the elements in we outside video?" And I was like, "That's slick, real slick," but just know. Uh, like I'll give y'all this. It's giving all that meets George Lopez. Okay, okay. And I'm not putting another element in there because I don't want y'all to figure that out. But that's it. George Lopez and all that. Mm-hmm. Y'all do what y'all will with that. Okay? That's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Definitely for that, bro. Once again, thank you for coming. Um, this was the Caden interview. Let them know where we could find you. Instagram, Apple Music, SoundCloud, all that. Yo, you can find me everywhere. The link is in my bio. As soon as you get to um, my Instagram, it is official.kdhn. That is official.kdhn. The link is in my bio. You can, it's linking on all streaming platforms. The song is for you. W-O-W-O. We outside. Thanks. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for his live performance.